Welcome to the One Year Bible, October 19, the Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 1, through chapter 34, verse 22. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the Lord gave him this second message. This is what the Lord says, The Lord who made the earth, who formed and established it, whose name is the Lord. Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, You have torn down the houses of this city and even the king's palace to get materials to strengthen the walls against the siege ramps and swords of the enemy. You expect to fight the Babylonians, but the men of this city are already as good as dead for I have determined to destroy them in my terrible anger. I have abandoned them because of all their wickedness. Nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and Israel and rebuild their towns. I will cleanse them of their sins against me and forgive all their sins of rebellion. Then this city will bring me joy, glory, and honor before all the nations of the earth. The people of the world will see all the good I do for my people, and they will tremble with awe at the peace and prosperity I provide for them. This is what the Lord says. You have said, this is a desolate land where people and animals have all disappeared. Yet in the empty streets of Jerusalem and Judah's other towns, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and laughter. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will be heard again, along with the joyous songs of people bringing thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. They will sing, Give thanks to the Lord of heaven's armies, for the Lord is good. His faithful love endures forever. For I will restore the prosperity of this land to what it was in the past, says the Lord. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. This land, though it is now desolate and has no people and animals, will once more have pastures where shepherds can lead their flocks. Once again, shepherds will count their flocks in the towns of the hill country, the foothills of Judah, the Negev, the land of Benjamin, the vicinity of Jerusalem, and all the towns of Judah. I, the Lord, have spoken. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things I promised them. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In that day Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be its name, The Lord is our righteousness. For this is what the Lord says, David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever, and there will always be Levitical priests to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings and sacrifices to me. Then this message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord says, If you can break my covenant with the day and the night so that one does not follow the other, only then will my covenant with my servant David be broken. Only then will he no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. The same is true for my covenant with the Levitical priests who minister before me. And as the stars of the sky cannot be counted and the sand on the seashore cannot be measured, so I will multiply the descendants of my servant David and the Levites who minister before me. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel and then abandoned them. They are sneering and saying that Israel is not worthy to be counted as a nation. But this is what the Lord says, I would no more reject my people 
then I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came with all the armies from the kingdoms he ruled, and he fought against Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. At that time, this message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go to King Zedekiah of Judah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will burn it down. You will not escape his grasp, but will be captured and taken to meet the king of Babylon face to face. Then you will be exiled to Babylon. But listen to this promise from the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord says. You will not be killed in war, but will die peacefully. People will burn incense in your memory, just as they did for your ancestors, the kings who preceded you. They will mourn for you, crying, Alas, our master is dead. This I have decreed, says the Lord. So Jeremiah the prophet delivered the message to King Zedekiah of Judah. At this time, the Babylonian army was besieging Jerusalem, Lachish, and Azekah, the only fortified cities of Judah not yet captured. This message came to Jeremiah from the Lord after King Zedekiah made a covenant with the people, proclaiming freedom for the slaves. He had ordered all the people to free their Hebrew slaves, both men and women. No one was to keep a fellow Judean in bondage, The officials and all the people had obeyed the king's command, but later they changed their minds. They took back the men and women they had freed, forcing them to be slaves again. So the Lord gave them this message through Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I made a covenant with your ancestors long ago when I rescued them from their slavery in Egypt. I told them that every Hebrew slave must be freed after serving six years. But your ancestors paid no attention to me. Recently you repented and did what was right, following my command. You freed your slaves and made a solemn covenant with me in the temple that bears my name. But now you have shrugged off your oath and defiled my name by taking back the men and women you had freed forcing them to be slaves once again. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, Since you have not obeyed me by setting your countrymen free, I will set you free to be destroyed by war, disease, and famine. You will be an object of horror to all the nations of the earth. Because you have broken the terms of our covenant, I will cut you apart, just as you cut apart the calf when you walked between its halves to solemnize your vows. Yes, I will cut you apart, whether you are officials of Judah or Jerusalem, court officials, priests, or common people, for you have broken your oath. I will give you to your enemies, and they will kill you. Your bodies will be food for the vultures and wild animals. I will hand over King Zedekiah of Judah and his officials to the army of the king of Babylon. And although they have left Jerusalem for a while, I will call the Babylonian armies back again. They will fight against this city and will capture it and burn it down. I will see to it that all the towns of Judah are destroyed with no one living there. The New Testament reading, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. They will say it is wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods. 
But God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. For we know it is made acceptable by the word of God and prayer. If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus one who was nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle, for our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and particularly of all believers. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Psalm 89, verses 1-13 through 13. I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever, young and old, will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. You rule the oceans. You subdue their storm-tossed waves. You crushed the great sea monster. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours, and the earth is yours. Everything in the world is yours. You created it all. You created north and south. Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon praise your name. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. Proverbs 25, verses 23 and 24 As surely as a north wind brings rain, so a gossiping tongue causes anger. It's better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Music